Welcome to Free Media, Free Minds, a program where we discuss issues pertaining to media and media freedom in South Africa. Well, today we take an informative look at what digital migration is, how it will affect the public and how it will be delivered. Well, we are joined in studio today by, by Mike Aldrich of CTV as well as, as Kate Skinner of Save Our SABC. Welcome to you. Well, before we get into the discussion, we take a look at an insert on the topic. No, I don't know anything about digital migration. Yeah, what is it all about? What is digital migration all about? It's the first time I hear about digital migration. We don't know anything about it. I don't think I don't think right Digital migration? Yeah, because SAPC is going to be a little bit of 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 a is it the DSTV or the DSTV? But it didn't happen. So my my point is, um, will our South Africans be able to, to pay the subscription? Because how many how many um, TV licenses are outstanding at the moment? Because I have myself, I have my, I have TV license, and do does it, um, everybody else in South Africa pay the TV license? That's a, that's another question. So if they going over um, to a, digi a digital um, what do you call it, then. Um, will the South African be able to, 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 to pay their subscription fees? And is it also the same scenario as with um, your MNET decoder, DSTV yeah. thing? Mm -hmm. um, now currently we're paying TV license but you see the same old stuff over and over and mm -hmm. over again. Now they're going onto the digital thing and you have to, and have to pay for it and it's still the same thing might just still happen, you know? So um, that is also not a very nice thing. I don't know. I'm, I'm not for that. At the moment, um I don't watch SBC3, it's only my girlfriend watch, which watches the soaps. Uh, we, we've we actually got DSTV at the moment. Um, we're watching on flat screen, so... I mean, I don't, I don't think there'll be any difference between between having that um, optional that uh, box uh, in order to watch it digital. So, but a lot of people, a lot of people don't know. Don't know about the new concept. You know what I'm saying? And that's about it. I don't think it's reasonable to the people that can't afford to buy, like for instance, like I can't understand, like I can't even TV license, but Dali. Now, how's the underprivileged people that's all it? But the men said, oh, can't cook, but no falani, but no falani, they can't live, oh. But no one will come say, SBC, which is a tower, what, ooh, and what powerful money means a TV scoop. I can't imagine what can imagine what TV is more of him to perform the hat cook. That you pay all this money for TV license, at the end of the day the programs is not up to standard and well, what, what do you expect people to do? And the sport do? is also not there anymore, you can't Everything even watch cricket on SABC 1, 2 or 3. And at the end of the day, majority TV. of the people they don't, I mean I'm going to be honest with you, I pay TV license, the only thing I watch is the news. That is the only thing I watch on, his, on, on, the, on the channels. We work in the, those rural communities and the problem in those rural communities, these people are sitting there, they already got a top scale soul system that they're trying to get away from. And you know, they're trying to get away from these social ills, but what's going to happen now? TV is a bit of a relief that they get to keep them busy. Now if they can't afford a digital converter, what's going to happen now? They go back to the best converter they have, which is the bottle. So, <laughs> thanks to SABC for the great work yeah. they're doing. All the hard work we're doing goes up in flame. So, I mean, it's a redundant exercise. They're trying to follow all the new technologies in the world and all that. But before do that, give the people what they want, which is great programming people that will come home and actually want to watch it. Interesting commentary coming through the inserts there, Kate and uh, Mike. Mike, uh, people saying that they really don't know what digital migration is all about, although it was a few years ago introduced to the public and they were told about it. Of course, people not focusing as much on it because it wasn't important in their lives. Yeah, but yeah. Mike, tell us what is digital migration all about? Right. 
Digital migration is basically the change from analog broadcasting to digital broadcasting. Uh, it's something that is going to affect all television viewers. So if you're watching this program, then it is going to affect you. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a change in technology similar to, you, you can liken it to the, the, the change from the old LP vinyl albums to CDs. Mm. So that was a change from an analog medium to a digital medium. For television viewers, what it means is that uh, at present we watch television, uh, you know, that is the free-to-air channels, on our normal analog television sets. With digital broadcasting, everyone will have to buy a set-top box with to, in order to receive that digital signal. Mm. And um, so you'll buy the set-top box, and what that will give you is firstly better reception, so you'll get a clearer uh, television picture, and also you'll have more channels. Mm. So the SABC will have more channels, and uh, that's basically the principle. Yeah, we, we've heard that they'll be having 17 channels, so that in itself will be a challenge for, for them. But we look at, I think the cut of that is November 2013 for South Africa, or for, for the whole of South Africa internationally, 2015. Yes, basically uh, South Africa is a, a, a member of the International Telecommunications Union and it's that body which is driving this digital migration worldwide. Uh, and internationally, according to the uh, treaty, the cutoff date for, to migrate to digital is 2015. So South Africa has set itself a target of, of migrating fully to digital by 2013 which is a very ambitious target because it gives us a, a pretty short time mm. period in which to make that, that switch over. Yeah, and, and it seems that we need to um, educate our public, ourselves uh, and, and the public as well. Kate, uh, from your side, how do you understand the processes involved where um, digital migration is concerned? Look, I mean, I think that, that Mike has explained it really well, but, but maybe the one thing to say about the, um, the, they've got a, a, what they call the dual illumination period um, where um, all the broadcasters that, that are um, presently um, broadcasting in, in, a, in this terrestrial format, so e ETV, SABC and MNET, not, not DSTV, not the satellites, but they will have to, to broadcast both in analog and in digital which is very expensive because they have to transmit all their programming on, on both sets of signals. Um, and so what you want to do is you do want to keep that, that digital, that, that um, dual illumination period quite short so that they don't have to, to, to spend a lot of time um, and a lot of money on, on that dual illumination period. But the, but the problem is that you have to make sure that people buy those set-top boxes because if, if they don't and you switch off the analog signal, people will get no TV, they will get no SABC ETV. So, so, so the thing which I think is important is that we've got to get that message out about the importance of buying the set-top box. Um, also, in order for people to buy the set-top box, they've got to have some incentive because it's expensive and, you know, so one of the things is that the, the um, ETV and SABC, etc., must start to produce some interesting programming so that it's worth their while, people's while, to actually buy the set-top boxes. So there's a lot to be done. The set-top boxes need to come out, they need to be on the shelves, we need to buy them. The broadcasters need to be starting to produce more interesting programming so that people want to buy those set-top boxes. All of that needs to, 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 to happen. And I think the problem is that the process is moving very slowly. And I don't think we're going to meet that, that, that 2013 deadline. Yeah. Mike, uh, one of the comments that came through is that we can't afford this. We can hardly afford the license fee now. What about the top of box um, where that is concerned? What will people then do? Will they gen then just decide, well, then we'll not watch television? Yeah, well, is that a worrying factor as well? Yes, it is one of the factors because obviously if, uh, if a lot of people decide to stop watching television, then the, the telev television audience will go right down and that will make it much more difficult for broadcasters to be sustainable because obviously then you know, the advertising packages won't be as, a, as a attractive to advertisers, mm. etc. 
So, mm. so um, is it not a case of uh, educating people, as you say, the top up boxes and, and all of that? Yeah. I think at the moment mm. people are, they don't know what it's all about. So you kind of, what you don't know, you, you feel afraid of, uh, kind of, you're not very welcoming where that is concerned. Is it not, edu we should be educating our people where uh, those things are concerned, analog and digital? For that. Yes, I mean, absolutely. And I think also that there, there, there are a lot of misconceptions around this. So for instance, the, the, the cost actually comes from buying the set top box. But there will be a subsidy for set-top boxes. So if you, I mean, that still needs to be worked out, the details of that. But, but poor people will be able to get a, a subsidy to buy the set-top box. And it doesn't mean that you'll be paying more on a, on, a, on a monthly basis. It's not a subscription television thing. It's still free to air. And I think there's a lot of un misunderstanding around it. There's a sense that this, what we're doing now is we're moving to a kind of DSTV yes. subscription yes. thing. It's not that. It's free to air. The only cost comes in from is is from buying the, the set-top box. Also, there's a t big misconception, which I have to say a lot of people are happy that uh, for that misconception to stay, that you have to buy a new TV, that you now need to buy a new swanky yes, digital TV or whatever. You don't. The set-top box, you can use your old TV. So all of that, that um, kind of publicity and education stuff needs to happen so that people don't get swindled. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a fascinating insert because you've yeah. got a sense of just the absolute ignorance of what is this and fear. And you're right, ignorance breeds a sense of fear, right? Well, actually, let's not even go there. Um, yeah. yeah. Mike, uh, tell us a bit about, I'm sure there are, you know, pros and cons to everything. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be the pros for um, mm. digital migration? Well, the essential reason why it's happening is because it's a more efficient use of the radio frequency spectrum. Now, the radio frequency spectrum is uh, a very valuable resource, and that is a resource which actually belongs to the people of South Africa. So that, that resource is managed by government, in, in particular by ICASA at, at this point in time. And essentially what happens with digital broadcasting is, at, at present, every broadcaster in the analog environment has their own frequency. So for example, in order to tune into CTV, you tune into a particular frequency and there's only CTV on that frequency. In a digital broadcasting environment, broadcasters share one frequency. So you'll have all the broadcasters, C CTV, SABC, ETV and Mnet all sharing one frequency. So that frees up frequency spectrum and government is then, will then sell that frequency spectrum in, a, in what they call an auction. So other people who, who wish to make use of the radio frequency spectrum, like the cell, cell phone providers, Wi-Fi providers, and broadcasters will then be able to, to get those extra frequencies in order to carry their, their signals. Mm. So, and, and what would the benefit be for the viewers? I mean, are they getting a clearer picture, a, clear, a better channel? They're getting a the lot radio more channels, concerned. so they're getting a lot more channels. So instead of having only three SABC channels, they'll have up to 17 channels. So, uh, you know, the SABC fulfilling its language mandate, um, you know, um, having a whole lot of extra programming and space for that extra programming, that that's, that is, is something that is potentially very positive. The picture quality is better. Also, there's a lot of issues around language. So, for instance, you can have various audio tracks to, to a particular program. Um, also, there's much more options in terms of subtitling. So, so there's a lot. So, in terms of the SABC, if we're talking specifically about the SABC fulfilling its mandate, its public mandate, there is the potential for it to do it much better. The big problem, though, of course, is the funding issues. Will will the SABC be able to put all that extra programming on all those extra channels? And if you don't come up with a, a better funding model um, that will cater for all, all of that extra channel space and the and and money to make all that extra programming, what you could see is actually just cheaper and cheaper programming and more and more per repeats. Now that's not going to fulfill our public mandate. So that's the kind of worry. So there's a lot of potential benefits. But it really is quite dependent on, on, on a funding, a new funding model that really does, does look at how, how we're going to um, pay yeah. for that programming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and do they yeah. need to get 17 channels? Can that not be given to somebody else? Well, this yeah. is, this is the, the, the question. Do, mm. do we want to use this opportunity just to make a much bigger SABC? You know, and we know all, all, the, all the, 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 the problems that the SABC is currently experiencing. Yeah. Mm. So Thank do you. we simply want to inflate that? Or, yeah, indeed. Yeah. We'll, we'll continue our discussion. We'll be right back after the break.
Welcome back to Free Media, Free Minds, and we continue our discussion on digital migration with uh, Mike Aldrich of CTV and Kate Skinner of Save Our SABC. Mike, just, uh, you know, we were busy discussing pros and cons of uh, digital migration. Um, you also mentioned that, um, you know, th these major benefits uh, to uh, this uh, top up box or to uh, digital migration as well. Mm -hmm. Just unpack that for us. Yeah. You know, one of the promises of digital broadcasting is that it can turn your television set into a computer. Now, the way that that would happen is that if your, if your set-top box has what's called a return path capacity, in other words, you're not simply receiving the, 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 the signal from yeah. the broadcaster, but you're also able to send information out. So, for example, if you are able to, to uh, connect your cell phone to the set-top box that it can make uh, calls, then your, your, your television set functions much, in much the same way as, as your computer does when it's connected to the internet. So, ultimately, in the, in, in the long term, your television set can act as a computer to connect you to the internet and to download information that you want. So whether that, that information is from the World Wide Web, or it could be programs, video programs that are downloaded, or music that is downloaded, or software that is downloaded, or various ap applications like word processing or spreadsheets, etc. So it has the promise actually to really empower our people by turning your television into a computer in the long term. Well, I'm sure the kids are all excited now, jumping up and down, saying, Mom, we want that, <laughs> irrespective of the cost. But um, will you, the cost, Kate, uh, are you able to tell us, will, will this save us on cost? And are we able to afford, I mean, many of us um, cannot afford the internet, for example. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, the, the possibilities um, around this kind of in, in interaction and, and interactivity is, is fabulous. But, but I think the, 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 the big issue is the cost of the set-top box, because every time you add another feature to it, so for instance, if you want to have high-definition channels, you know, there's another feature that you have to add to the set-top box. And if you're wanting, um, you know, this return path capacity, uh, it, it, there's a certain cost to the box um, and and obviously the um, government is worried about that because th they're going to have to subsidize a certain number of boxes so um, so there's a huge debate at the moment and in fact one of the major reasons why the set top boxes are not on our shelves now and why people aren't buying them is because people have not actually finalized the specs of what the the, the capacity of the set top box needs to be um, so, so I, I think the thing, the thing, and, and just the debate is basically two, the, the, the two sides to it. One is to go what, in terms of the route that Mike's talking about, a super sophisticated box that can do most fantastic things, but it's quite expensive. Yeah. Versus the other debate, which is or the other side of the debate, which is get out a cheap box as cheap as possible, so that so that as many people as possible buy it up, and the subsidy doesn't need to be that much. And then a later point, you know, get get you know a more sophisticated box but at the moment just make digital migration happen just make sure that people at the very least can actually get all of those channels um, and when when the analog signal is switched off you at least have your TV channels so there, it, there's there's a lot of different debate and people have totally different views on it many some people go cheap cheap get it out and other people go wow let's get a sophisticated box let's get it right now and I think that's what's also stopping the process from moving forward at the moment because we actually can't decide um, yeah. and yeah it's kind of stalled things a bit. Yeah. Mike, how would this affect CTV? It's, it has the potential to be of benefit to CTV because uh, with digital broadcasting it, it, it happens on what's called a multiplex. Now multiplex is simply a, a way of linking different transmitters together. At present, CTV only has one transmitter on Tigerberg, uh, which is why you have to have line of sight of Tigerberg in order to pick up the signal. So if we get onto a multiplex that links different transmitters together, it means that we could potentially get more transmitters to reach the whole of the Cape Town area. But the, you know, the, the, the problem is that we don't know what that will cost. And if it costs, it costs more, who's actually going to be paying for it? Yeah. So yeah, that's a... Uh, yeah, and I, uh, yeah, and to think we should be going there at 2013, uh, where the Minister of Communication said she will be pushing for it. 
definitely she, she's focusing on it. She, she mentioned it now that uh, you know, she's taken over, etc. So, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, what will then have to happen if it, it can't, uh, you know, go um, uh, digital at the time that it's supposed to? Okay, well, it is interesting because, in fact, one of the, um, the sort of head honcho at the SCBC, um, um, somebody called Richard Waghorn, was asked this question, like, what happens if we don't make the deadline? You know, yeah. 2015 kind of comes and goes. Um, the, the issue there is that um, the, the problem, uh, I mean, it, it won't necessarily be the hugest problem, but it means that, that your signal won't be protected. Um, so there could be interference um, in, 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 your, in your signals, you know, post that, that date. But but the thing is, what you could do is, as countries is negotiate around, mm. around that. The, the, the big problem, though, so, so, I mean, in terms of kind of those signal issues and, uh, I mean, some people are saying, well, it won't necessarily be the biggest kind of problem. But the thing is that the digital dividend, the fact that you are um, not going to have that extra spectrum is, is one of the big problems. So, for instance, you know, uh, the, the possibilities of the, uh, the cell phone operators and the mobile operators and things, you know, getting more space, more, more television, um, uh, licenses being um, allocated, etc. You, you're just not going to have that opportunity because because that spectrum won't have been freed up because we won't have moved. Mm -hmm. So I think those would be some of the things I would say. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that uh, what what governments plan is is that they're going to use the money that they get from selling off that spectrum to subsidise the set top boxes for 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 the poor people. So if they're not able to sell that, that spectrum and get the money, then they won't have the money to subsidize the set-top boxes, and that's going to cause a big yeah. economic uh, mess, basically. Wow. Yeah. So, so is it not that um, more people will be scrambling for spectrum, like uh, the, the, the people, uh, uh, cell phones, etc., um, for uh, that space to, to, or, or radio stations, whatever? Uh, we, we should then have uh, more people coming to the fore, more radio stations, more um, perhaps community TV, etc. Mike, is, do you think that will be happening? Mm. Basically, that, that spectrum will be sold off mainly to, as I say, like cell phone providers and, mm. and that kind of thing. So there, there, there won't be theoretically any more analog television broadcasts. So all of the community channels will be on the, on the digital multiplex along with SABC, ETV, Etc. So, you know, that, that being said, that digital multiplex does have the capacity to carry more, more channels. Mm -hmm. So it depends on then who's able to get onto it and uh, how much the SABC uses of their, their particular so, multiplex. So will, will they have a kind of carte blanche in choosing? Um, or is it set that they now will get that 17 channels, the SABC? Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's what's been allocated to them. Yes but then it, it, it depends how much they're actually able to do. So if the SABC is not able to use all of its capacity, so say they're only able to bring out five channels or 10 channels, mm. then they will actually lose, pot potentially lose that capacity at the end of the digital migration period. In other words, at the end of okay. 2013. So then it might be allocated to, to others. What government is saying now is that anyone can apply to have what they call a digital incentive channel. In other words, you can apply to have, your, have a, a TV channel on the, that digital multiplex in, in order to try to get more channels in order to encourage people to buy those set-top boxes. Mm. Mike, speak to us about it. Yeah, sorry, but, Kate, I do, go but I do think that, that also one of the things is is um, around allowing for new players, and so there are a number of new players that want to get onto those multiplexes, and so there are people that are saying that that you know we must actually ensure that they're new players because that is actually going to ensure that there's greater greater diversity. Mm. Yes. So 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 it is it is important that there are new players that that, that come come in and and are catered for on the multiplexes, yeah. um, and there, there is there is space. I mean, there, there's not, a, there, I mean, I think the other thing which was interesting, um, just in terms of the standard that we chose, this DVB-T2 allows for even greater use of, of, the, of the spectrum um, and even small, you know, for, for um, even more channels to be, to, to, uh, um, to actually be on, on the same sort of portion of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I think I think that that's so. So we do need to open up the opportunities for 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 new players. Yeah. So, so Mike, do you think um, NGOs etc. will be benefiting from digital migration as well? 
NGOs. Yeah, the non-governmental sector. Yeah. Well, it remains to be seen. I mean, uh, you know, I think with N NGOs, we're probably talking about community television. Mm. And community television faces its, its own challenges in terms of funding. So as, as I say, you know, the question that, that confronts us now is who's actually going to pay for community TV to be on those digital mul multiplexes? Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you so much uh, for joining us today and uh, indeed I think that uh, we should, as uh, also Kate mentioned earlier, that there should be this educational uh, programs happening mm -hmm. to, to inform people what di di digital, digital uh, migra migration is all about and uh, so that people can perhaps feel more comfortable with it and, and know what it entails and for example the cost. People are very worried about costs. Uh, yeah. No, we know that uh, really uh, money, uh, you know, people's already on a tight budget and mm -hmm. seems like television, uh, you know, is a luxury, etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's hope that, that people will uh, be able to understand what this digital, and I'm sure there will, there are many people that are technically inclined, what digital migration is all about. So thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, this program was brought to you by Friedrich Ebert Stifting, the Alternative Information and Development Centre in collaboration with with the Cape Town Community TV. I have studied the idea of a democratic